I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thanks for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, we return to our data engineering playlist, and we're going to talk about how to use Group by in SQL. Now, Group by is used for all kinds of summary statistics, and usually when you want to, you know, sum up a, a bunch of order items, the totals, into, uh, you know, a sales order total, and things like that, and that's what we're going to look at today. So without further ado, let's get to our group by and SQL. Need coaching or help on your project? Make sure to check out my Patreon. The link is in the description. Okay, so I'm using uh, SQL Server Management Studio here um, to run a query against a database I have called Crufty, where I created the AdventureWorks database, uh, uh, which is sort of like a test database from Microsoft. And uh, here we go. So if I uh, do a statement here saying select all from, uh, from sales LT to sales order detail, and I hit F5 to run it, uh, or click run on the toolbar, um, I get this sort of uh, uh, nice detail list of items. And you can see that there's multiple rows for each sales order. That one had two. This one's got a whole bunch if you scroll down. You can see this sales order has a whole bunch of stuff on it. Uh, there's an order quantity and uh, unit price, and it's been calculated into a line total already, which is nice. Um, and uh, uh, that's sort of given us an, uh, you know, a table that we can do a query against. So I'll comment out the first, uh, uh, first statement there. So we're not going to run that again uh, right now. And we're just going to do uh, we're sort of condense this, and we'll say select sales order ID and line the total from, from our order, sales order detail table. And uh, that's going to give us a nice um, couple of columns. Uh, now you can see there's our, you know, that one has one in it. These, these guys are all belonging to one order. And so the, the question is, you know, how do we sum up all of the line total items uh, but still retain that sum against the order ID so we know what the total was for each order. And that's really what we want to find with this uh, SQL statement. And so I'm going to type in uh, sum line total as uh, order as order uh, total. So I'll give it an alias name there. And, uh, and then we're going to go uh, group by um, uh, sales LT dot uh, sales order ID. Or you can just put sales order ID because we've got uh, sales LT in the from and that should be a sum there. I fixed that one. Okay, so so now if I hit F5 and uh, To run it you can see that uh, it has summed up all of the uh, all of the uh, line totals and put them into an order total uh, That we have for every order and so that's like the very basic way that you can use this uh, you know using group by um, and you can add all kinds of other stuff. You just need to make sure that, you know, your group by the sales order ID remains and that each of the averages or counts or sums that they uh, are organized according to that, you know, sales order ID. And in this case, our, column, our columns are ordered by that or they can be grouped by that. And so we can say, give me the average line total as line average. Give me the count of all the sales order IDs. And so you can see um, if we run that one, then we, we've got some summary data uh, with just a few lines of SQL. And that's very, very handy. So we can go, you know, this order has this much, and the average was this much, and the item count was, was this many. And uh, that's handy. So we can use where in our um, in our group by uh, statement, our summary statement, and we use where before the group by clause, so so that it gets the data according to the where clause before it does the summary. So in this case, we're saying where the order is equal to seventy one or seven one seven eight zero. So in that case, it's gonna it's gonna run that select query of getting just you know that item first all the rows of that first and then it'll do the summary and so that makes it uh, pretty nice and efficient and so as you can see you know if I run that one it has all our item our data in it and you can see some of these orders are pretty big 
There's one for 29,000. Some of them are small. There's just a few items. But if we want to filter by one of our summary uh, items, then that's where we're going to use our, our having uh, keyword there. And we'll say having sum of line total uh, greater than, say, 10,000. So if I put in 10,000 here, um, then, then we're doing a filter after we have calculated all the items. We use the having keyword, and that's going to um, that's going to give us a filter after of the items that we uh, uh, calculated. So here we can see if I order it by the sum of line total as well, then you can see there's all of our, our all of our items uh, with uh, order total greater than ten thousand. So that's what we want. We want to be able to use with the having statement. We can also look at other items in there. So we could say, you know, having the line uh, sum of line total greater than ten thousand, and also the count of sale order greater than ten, and so that will uh, put two clauses on there so that uh, we we can get that calculation uh, with ten thousand and greater than ten. And so this is where it gets interesting because you can use uh, both where and having in the same statement, and and uh, it is actually quite important to know how to use those and to practice with those to see how your queries work. Uh, because in this case, uh, we'll say where order ID is greater than, say, uh, one of the higher numbers like uh, 71902 or 71900, how's that? And, uh, and uh, so now it's going to run that query and it's going to grab those where records first so that if you have a massive table, this will speed it up incredibly. So uh, it's going to grab everything with greater than 71,900 first, and then it's going to do that group by, and then it's going to run the, the having part of the statement uh, second, and where it says greater than 10,000 and count of sales order uh, is greater than 10. And so this gives you a lot of power when you're doing summaries that you can you can filter your data before the group by hap or before the summary happens and then you can also filter after the summary happens. And so uh, so that's really uh, the, the essence of, of group by uh, that you'll use in you know 95% of the cases. Uh, you can also reference other um, you know uh, other fields in the table. Um, you know this has modified date you can put in as minimum give me the min minimum modified date as min date and as you can see uh, all of these orders had the the same date uh, it's not very uh, variable in the adventureworks database but you get the idea um, so all of those are in there and so you could also do uh, you could you know select from within that year um, we'll get the same records but this is sort of how you do it uh, you could select the you know within the same year where modified date is between, um, and you can put your two dates in there. In this case, I'll put in uh, January 1st and uh, uh, say December 31st of 2008. Wow, this is really old data. Um, <laughs> and uh, But you can sort of get the idea. So if I put in the where, then it's going to calculate that where, uh, that selection of records first, and then it's going to look at all the rest of the item, uh, the having part of it second. And uh, so that can really help to speed up your, your queries. And so you want to make sure that you always take a look at that. And that is how you can use group by with SQL. Hope you enjoyed today's discussion on how to use group by with SQL. If you like what you saw today, please give the video a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet. Click the bell when you see the bell. And if you have any questions or comments, put those in the comment section below. Have a great day, have a safe day, and I'll catch you next time.